Okay, we're going to look at now surface area, lateral surface area. First of all, what is the difference between the two? The lateral surface area is the lateral that goes around. Your bases are excluded. So it's the side around the side. Okay, so this is around the side sum of the side surfaces. Okay, or the faces. Whereas a surface area is all the faces. So this includes all sides plus the bases. So this is the difference between the two. This one excludes the base or the bases. Okay, so let's look at these, these as objects. Okay, this Q or square prism, what do we got here? We have two bases the top and the bottom. If we're talking lateral surface area, it's only these around here. If we're talking surface area, it is this around this way, plus the top and the bottom. Okay, looking at a triangular prism, same type of thing. You've got your top and your bottom are your bases. The lateral surface area runs around the side and then the surface area is the lateral surface area plus the area of the, two, to, of the two bases. So that's what you're dealing with. Now, if we go to a pyramid, for example, you have one base, but your lateral now are the triangles, the sum of the three triangles that go around the sides of this triangular base. Now, so the lateral would be the triangular sides and then you add the base for the surface area. If we look at this square pyramid, what do we have? Well, we have a square base, and then we have four triangles. The four triangles are your lateral surface area. When you do the lateral and then you add the base to it, now you have the surface area of the whole shape. So that's the difference between the two. So to do surface areas, what should you do? First of all, decide the base. What is the base? So you choose the base. After you choose the base, then you analyze all the shapes. Notice, prisms have rectangles or squares for side shapes. Whereas pyramids have triangles for the sides. Cylinders which are 3D but not polyhedra, cylinders have circles for the base and a rectangle for 
the side. Cones have a circle base and the lateral or the side is a partial circle. Okay, these have a lot of formulas, but before we go into the formulas, I want to cover one other thing about surface area. Remember, we have already talked about perimeter and area. Perimeter, remember, was the distance around. And the distance around was calculated by the sum of all the sides. Okay, now let's think about this. We've already talked a bit about surface area. Surface area is the faces of the 3D shape. In a sense, it is the same as the perimeter. Because remember, your perimeter, if we were to look at this flat surface, is this plus this plus this plus this, right? That gives you your perimeter of that rectangle. Now, when we talk about a rectangular prism, our perimeter is the surfaces. So we have the four surfaces of the lateral plus the surfaces of the two bases. And that makes the, the surfaces which enclose this particular 3D solid. And so therefore, just like up here, the perimeter was the sum of all the sides. The surface area is the sum of all the faces. And if, since they're faces and they're three, 3D shapes, you have to calculate the area of the faces. So therefore, the surface area is the sum of all the area of the faces. And since it's area, and you measure area in little squares, Surface area is measured in square units. In other words, square feet, square inches, square centimeters, square meters, square kilometers, square miles, square whatever the unit of measure is because you're talking about those little squares that are inside and that makes up your surface area. And so you use the same unit of measure as you do for the area, and it's the surfaces, so it's the surfaces all added together. And I hope that will help you to remember what surface area actually is. Whereas over here, remember the area was the, major, the measurement by square units, of the amount inside the shape.
And in lesson eight, we're going to go into volume, which is also the amount inside the 3D solid. And we will talk more about that later. I just wanted to make that correlation between perimeter and surface area, which is sum of the distance around, or the sum of all the sides, versus the surface area, which is the sum of all the faces, because, and those faces are areas, so therefore it's the sum of all the area of the faces measured in square units, because it encloses that, it's the faces that determine that 3D solid all the way around. So anyway, that's an important part to understand about surface area. So therefore, this is why identifying your surfaces and the shape of those surfaces is really, really important because you're going to have to calculate the area of those shapes. So if we look at area at the square, if you have a square in your shape, remember your area of a square is equal to the side times itself or side squared. The area of a rectangle is equal to the length times the width. And again, it's going to be in square units. All of these are. The area of a triangle is one half the base times the height. And the area of a circle, which is going to be very important here, is area is equal to pi r squared. Now the last one is a sphere. And the surface area of a sphere is equal to 4 pi r squared. That's a very specific formula. So, thinking about that, let's look again at the rectangular solid. If we look at this rectangular solid, what do we have? Well, we have two bases. So every one of these shapes are going to have two of them. A rectangular prism. There are two bases. There are two rectangles that are this shape. You see that? The front and the back rectangle are the same. Two rectangles of one shape. And then two rectangles of another shape. Okay. See that? Two rectangles, two rectangles. These two are the same, these two are the same, and these two are the same. So we have two of every shape. So if we have my rectangular prism here, not a very good drawing, but anyway, there it is. I have, my base is going to be made up of a length and a width. And then this would be the height of this thing. So if my length, length and width and height. So I have two bases. So this is two of the length times width. And then we're going to add to it two of the length times the height and two of the width times the height. So whatever those are, after you figure that out, you're going to add them all up together. Okay, so let's go ahead 
and let's do one. If I have a rectangular prism with a length, width, and height of 6 by 4 by 10. In other words, I have a length of 6, a width of 4, and a height of 10. Now, you're going to have, this is my length, my width, my height. So I'm going to have two of those six times four. And then I'm going to have two of the six times ten. And I have two of the four times ten. So that's 24 making 48. And 60 times two is 120. 40 times 2 is 80, making 248. So this would be, and let's make them inches. So this would be 248 inches squared, or square inches. And that would be what the surface area of this rectangular prism. Now, if I wanted to know the lateral surface area, so this is my surface area. My lateral surface area is only going to have the ones that have the height in it. So we're going to only have two of these and two of these for my lateral because my bases, which is my length times width, are excluded. So these would be 120 plus 80 equals 200 inches squared. So you see your lateral surface area is always less than your surface area. So it's important to understand what you're dealing with here when you deal with your rectangular prism and the surface area of that rectangular prism. Another thing we can do with this rectangular prism, which makes it kind of fun, is there's a little picture that can help you remember how to do this one. And I call it the lip method. And the reason I call it the lip method is because when you draw the picture, it actually looks like a set of lips. So let's go 6 times 4 times 10. We're going to have 2 of these plus 2 of this multiplication plus 2 of this multiplication. You draw a line through it, you can see that kind of looks like a set of lips up there. So your lip method makes it easier to perform the surface area of a rectangular prism. Okay, let's look at another prism. Okay, we looked at doing a surface area of a rectangular solid. So now let's look at a cube. Remember the cube has six surfaces, all of which are a square. And since they're all the same, this is 6 as squared. And remember the cube is the same thing as a hexahedron. So I told you that you would be able to do the surface area of a hexahedron. So your surface area of a cube is 6s squared. The lateral area of the cube is equal to 4s squared, because there's only four sides on that one. Remember, your lateral is without the bases, so there's only four faces, whereas the whole surface area is six of them. Okay, let's look at a sphere. Well, we already did that one. Uh, let's look at a right circular or just a cylinder. We usually just call this a cylinder, but its fancy name is a right circular cylinder. And your 
homework because they go into real true official names, they will probably call it as a right circular cylinder. But we usually just call these cylinders. So what is my surface area of a right circular cylinder? Well, first of all, the surface area of it is equal to the base. There's two of them. And remember, they're circles, so it's pi times the radius squared plus the circular part that has the height in it, the walls here, all the way around that lateral surface area. If I were to cut this part and lay it open, it is actually a rectangle. But it is a rectangle with its length made up of the circumference of that circle. So it's 2 pi r, because 2 times r is the diameter, times the pi, times the height of that particular cylinder. Okay, so let's actually do a cylinder. Here I have a cylinder. It has a radius of 3 and a height of 10. So what is my surface area of that cylinder? Well, my circles, there's two of them, so it's 2 times pi times 3 squared, which is going to equal 9 times 2, which is 18 pi. My other one is my, my rectangular that makes up the side, and that's going to be 2 times pi times my radius, which is 3, times my height, which is 10. So 6 times 10 is 60 pi. Add these two together, and I get 78 pi. So my surface area of this cylinder is equal to 78 pi. And if we were to multiply that together, we'll find out what it is. 78 times 3.14. Follow the directions in your homework assignment as to what you use for pi. A lot of times I use 3.14, and when I give a test, 3.14 is what you're to use, and I'll actually remind you that on the test. So my actual surface area is equal to 244.92, and I did, let's do centimeters, centimeters squared, okay? My lateral surface area, remember that's just this part around, my lateral area, it would only be this part right here. This is your lateral because it's this piece here. And that is 60 pi. And 60 pi is going to equal to 3.14 times 60. And it is 188.4. As you can see again, your lateral is less than your surface area. So that gives you at least two of the different shapes that we can look at on this. And now let's go on to another one. Let's look at the surface area of a cone, a circular cone. Again, it's the same kind of thing. We usually just call it a cone. And this is equal to the base, which is pi r squared, plus the side. Okay, now the side of this can be expressed in two different ways. Remember I mentioned that the slant height is important? On this thing, the slant height is this here, going down the side. That's your slant height. And the slant height is actually the radius of this partial circle, okay? So we're given a couple of possibilities here. If we know the radius of the cone and the height of the cone, in other words, your cone, this would be the height of the cone, and this is the radius. If we know those two things, here is what the area of that partial circle is. Pi times the radius 
times the square root of r squared plus h squared. But notice, this makes a right triangle. And this here is your slant height. And I'm going to call it SL, SH for slant height. And your slant height, or maybe just in capital S, capital S equals slant height. Okay? If you know your slant height, you don't need that. Instead, your circle doesn't change, but this does. If you know your slant height, it's the pi times the radius times that capital S. And this is slant height. Okay? So it depends upon what you're given by the problem as to which formula you will use. If you do not, if you know the radius and the height of the cone, but you don't know the slant height, you have to use this one. If you know the slant height, then you don't need to do that. You only need to do this one. So there's a difference. So let's do one of those. Let's do a cone. Let's do a radius of four, not so big. And uh, let's do a slant height of five, okay? So let's see what that gives us. Looking at our formula, we're gonna use formula number two here. Pi r squared is my base. So that is going to be pi times four squared. And then my other one, my other part of it, pi rs is equal to pi times 4 times 5. Okay, so this is going to yield, my top one is going to be 16 pi plus 20 pi. So my whole surface area is equal to 36 pi, which is equal to 113.04 uh, feet, feet squared. My lateral area of this is only this part up here, that partial circle. So my lateral area is this only. So this would be 20 pi, which is equal to 6.6.28 or 62.8, I believe. 20 times 3.14, 62.8 feet squared. So you see there's both of those are involved in that. And it works out just fine, 62.8 feet squared. Let's look at a square pyramid. Okay, so what is the surface area of a square pyramid? It is equal to the base, which is your side squared, plus Okay, now this is where it gets kind of interesting. Remember what I said about your pyramids? Four of these triangles, there's four of them. So there's four times the area of a triangle, one half base times height. This height is your slant height of your side, okay? So, in other words, it's this here. This is the slant height here. And we would need to know the slant height to know that. So, if we know the slant height, it's four of them times one half, which gives you two times my side times my slant height. And again, we're going to use the capital S for the slant height.
If we do not know the slant height, then the surface area of this pyramid would again be s squared plus 2 times my side times the square root of h squared plus 1 fourth s squared. Why? What is happening on this? It is exactly the same thing that's happening on the cone. Okay, here's your base, s times s, but when we look at our slant height, you're getting the base times the, height, the slant height of this triangle. My base is s, so there's that. Now, how do we figure this, this is this? So it's this and this. I disagree with the book on that. This is one half of the S. Yeah, that would be one fourth of my S squared and my H. Oh yeah, H. The H of this thing, and I'm going to have to draw it a little bit different for you to see it. The H is the distance between the peak to the middle of this, okay? And so this is the H of the, of the um, pyramid. And then we're going from half of the base over to here to get my slant height. And I'm going to draw it on this side of, my of it. So here you've got the hypotenuse of this triangle. So this is the base and the height. So h squared plus, and this is one half of this, and you square one half and you get one fourth, and remember your s is also squared. So it becomes one fourth s squared. So that's if you have the height of the actual pyramid. Whereas this one is when you're given the slant height. This is when you do not have the slant height. So anyway, that's what it is. And the reason this is 2 is because, again, it's 1 half base times height of each one of those triangles. And there's 4 of them. And 4 times 1 half gives you 2. So there's two different formulas. And let's go ahead and do one of these. Okay, we're going to do a slant height here on this one, and let's make our slant height 6 and our base be a 4 by 4. So our base squared is what we're going to have for this is equal to 4 times 4, which is equal to 16. And my four triangles, so it's 4 times 1 half times my base times my height which is 4 times 1 half, which is 2, times base, which is my 4, times my height, which is my slant height, which is 6. And so that is equal to 24 times 2 is 48. So my surface area is equal to 48 plus 16, which is 14, here, my 1, 64. So this is 64 Let's make it inches, inches squared. My lateral area is only this part right here. This is my lateral area. And that one's equal to 48 inches squared. So let's do one now where we're not given the slant height. And this will happen if you're given ones that are just going to be A 
let's do a four by four again. And let's make the height of this thing uh, eight. And we'll go inches again. Okay? So, the base is the same thing. Your base would be four times four, equaling 16. But the rest is a little bit different because now we need to calculate this slant height because we don't have it. And I didn't used to put it in the formula. I just calculated by slant height and then used it. But we can use this second formula, which is your S squared. And so this part would be 2 times my S, which is my side, times the square root of H squared plus 1 fourth S squared. So this would be 2 times my side, which is 4, times the square root of 8 squared plus 1 fourth times 4 squared. Well, 1 fourth of 16 is 4. 8 squared is 64. So this becomes the square root of 68, and 2 times 4 times the square root of 68. Well, it's going to be 8 point something. I can tell you that on that one. So this would be 8 times the square root of 68 is equal to 65.97. Okay, so now we're going to add those two together. 69.57 plus 16 will give me... Point, my surface area is equal to 0.9711678. And this is inches squared. Now my lateral area, again, remember, it's only the triangles, so it's only this one. This is 65.97 inches squared. Oh my, that's a long video.